To Libya now, and Colonel Gaddafi's foreign minister says the government wants a ceasefire and could hold free elections within six months. Despite the offer, his government's forces continued their bombardment of Misrata. In the capital, Tripoli, our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Miller was taken to a safe house in the city to meet one of the rebel fighters there. Misrata's city centre is the front line in a battle for survival. The front line in the war against the dictator Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. Rebel fighters duck and weave to dodge his sniper's bullets. The detritus of nearly two months of heavy fighting littering the city's streets. Tripoli Street, which runs through the heart of the besieged city, is where the battle rages most fiercely. Half of it's in government control, half in rebel hands. It's their last major stronghold in western Libya. Many hundreds have been killed now, doctors say, the majority civilians. For Miserata's three to four hundred thousand people, life getting harder by the day is a lack of food, of medicine, safe water, no electricity. Cluster munitions made in Spain have now been widely filmed and their use documented by international human rights groups. These are lethal weapons. Each sprays 21 small, high-explosive bomblets. Today, the UN Human Rights Commissioner, a former war crimes judge, said their use against a civilian population could constitute a war crime. The Libyan government denies they've even got them in their arsenal. As the Libyan rebel leader traveled to Paris to meet President Sarkozy, who promised to intensify airstrikes on Gaddafi's army, we escaped our house arrest in a Tripoli hotel to meet a rebel fighter in the capital. We were taken to a safe house in the city. We cannot verify that this man is who he claims he is, but he took an enormous risk to meet us. We have enough guns. We have cells in every area of the capital. We're in contact with rebels in the east, in Misrata and Zawiya. When we attack checkpoints, we kill soldiers and take their weapons. Our aim is to kill Gaddafi. We will get rid of him. We will use suicide bombers. In Tripoli, the party hasn't even started. Peaceful protests do not work, he told me. They just lift us. He claimed 5,000 people had been arrested in Tripoli in recent weeks. When the party happens, it will be big. People will be killed. But the Libyan people have tasted blood and they're ready. The rope is tightening around Gaddafi's neck. Responding to an appeal by Libya's foreign minister to give peace a chance, the Tripoli insurgent said, no, no more chances. Gaddafi had 42 years. It's too late now. As the battle rages in Misrata, news from Libya's western mountains, which hug the border with Tunisia, that 6,000 villagers, mostly ethnic Berbers, have fled heavy shelling by Gaddafi's forces. One refugee who spoke to Channel 4 News by phone branded this nothing short of ethnic cleansing. Muammar Gaddafi pledged to fight to the last bullet, and he seems far from running out of those. And Jonathan joins us live now, and there are disturbing reports tonight of a British journalist possibly killed in Misrata. Yes, Chris, the uh, Foreign Press Corps here in Tripoli is reeling from this news. We got it just late this afternoon that one, possibly two Western journalists have been killed in a mortar attack by Gaddafi's forces in Misrata. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard when it uh, comes home like this. As, as to what I got up to uh, today, uh, yes, it was very dramatic and, and frankly very convincing to meet this insurgent right here in the heart of the capital, Tripoli. What he told me was that they're flush with guns and money and that Gaddafi, he said, was digging his own grave because he's been handing out weapons to many, many Libyans. He says, we're just buying those off them for about $1,000 a piece. Uh, he said uh, that, uh, you know, they're attacking these uh, checkpoints and uh, killing soldiers on them, taking their weapons too. And that corresponds to what we're hearing in the hotel, which are these crackles of gunfire, which sound very like firefights every single night. And what we uh, have been told by the government is that this is celebratory fire, but the government does not have much to celebrate. Jonathan Miller in Tripoli.